Hello everyone and welcome or welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today I am bringing you a fun and new type of video. This is just gonna be a sketchbook play with me video. Really more specifically, it's going to be an ink with me video because I have a sketch in this little sketchbook of mine that I would like to ink out. So I thought it might be fun to ink it with you and just kind of do a little chatty video, just like a chatty update. Hang out with me, you can either uh, mute me if you don't want to hear me rambling to you and just watch me ink uh, a sketch or if you like kind of chatty videos then this is the one for you <laughs> personally I really like these kind of videos where I can just have someone on in the background and I'm just kind of listening while I'm doing other things so maybe you want to grab your sketchbook too and work alongside as I ramble so quick update on this little sketchbook here you may have heard me talk about it in a studio vlog and by the way I do have a studio vlog coming soon but I realized I've put a lot of behind the scenes stuff in the next studio vlog coming out that I can't post quite yet so I've had to kind of delay publishing that video a little bit so that studio vlog will be out probably in the next week or two um, probably more like two weeks um, because of the little secrets that are inside of it but anywho you have probably heard me mention this in a previous vlog I think I talked about this a couple of vlogs ago about my little book of horror sketchbook. This is a new sketchbook that I have started. I have several sketchbooks in the works here, so don't think that this is my only one. I have different sketchbooks for different purposes, but I thought that it might be fun to have this one be like my horror sketchbook where I would draw kind of like spooky things. So these were some things that I was doodling while watching Nightmare Before Christmas. I might even come back and touch this up a little bit, so we maybe will play with that a little bit too. But I realized that I, I don't know why I really put this theme on myself, and this is what I'm gonna be inking today, by the way, and we'll talk about this a little bit more in detail in a second, but I don't know why I put this theme on myself because I should know better that whenever I tend to try to theme a book or a sketchbook, I kind of drift away from it or I don't come back and really work on it. So I am doing away with the little book of horrors uh, theme so actually I should just put a big old sticker on top of this because I am getting rid of that and just turning it into my regular old little sketchbook because I have one of these sketchbooks this is the Strathmore mixed media sketchbook by the way the soft cover I have a larger hardcover one that I've been using for years that has just kind of gotten lost in the weeds and then I have a bigger one like this that has become my project development sketchbook and that one I use quite a bit and I'm actually like more than halfway full on it but it's really that is specific for like swatching and coming up with creative ideas and projects and that is really its own thing so I have I've liked using the Strathmore sketchbook so much that I just kind of decided, you know what, let's just turn this into a regular old sketchbook and do whatever I want in it. I don't want the restriction of feeling like I have to work to a theme, and I know better than that. I don't even know why I was like, let's have a Halloween sketchbook, because let's be honest, everything I do is a little bit on the spooky side anyways, so it doesn't matter. Anyways, I have this little doodle in here from uh, Nightmare Before Christmas. This is when I was watching it. And then this here is what I want to ink today. And I sketched this up last night. And it's a little page of kind of spooky, witchy imagery along with some kind of sewing items. And that is because this pertains to a new Dungeons and Dragons character I have created. And I am drafting up some ideas. And I have more ideas kind of over here for a specific notebook slash sketchbook that will be just for Dungeons and Dragons, which is a larger version of this. So I'm kind of just playing with some imagery and some ideas. So that's kind of what this is. So I thought it might be fun to kind of ink that out and share those ideas with you as I'm inking. The first thing I wanna do actually is get just a little bit of color into this because um, it is kind of like a pastel witch goth vibe. So let me get a little brush and some water and I wanted to put like a little bit of a pink in the background potentially, but nothing like too, too crazy. This format of videos, by the way, is very much how a lot of the videos on Patreon are. So this style of like overhead chatty arty videos is new to my YouTube channel, but this is how I make art over on Patreon. So a very like low key, hey, let's just hang out make art with me sort of style of videos. So if you're looking for more videos that are like this, uh, my Patreon is definitely where it's at. I have tons of stuff over there. 
So I'm just trying to lighten up this pink a little bit because I want kind of more of like a pastel-y pink. And this is just really messy. This palette is kind of a mess. Um, this is the palette that has just come to be from various unboxings of things and I haven't really messed with it. So uh, it is what it is. Just lots of random Daniel Smith stuff in there and uh, some random acrylic paint, some M. Graham & Co watercolor there's some really random stuff in here so i just want to get a little bit of a of a background to this just so it's not so boring and the vibe of this is very much like pastel witch vibes because that is the character that i have created so my D, &D crew i'll call them and some of you may know them from the last huge campaign that we played for literally two years that is, I think, technically still not finished, but I stopped playing that particular campaign because I was pregnant with Roman and had the baby, so playing D&D &D for, you know, eight hours a, a week became very challenging. Um, but we are starting up a new campaign, and I feel so honored that uh, our DM has invited uh, James and I to partake, and what kind of is working in our favor is, I mean, this is a positive of the pandemic in this moment, is that we are doing it completely on Zoom, we're not streaming it, and we're not uh, playing for as long of sessions as we usually do, which is good for James and I, who have a baby, so um, we will hopefully be able to play because we can play when, she, when uh, Roman, when James, when Roman is asleep and um, we can both sneak down to the garage to play some Dungeons and Dragons. So it's really exciting. I really miss playing. It's been a long time, you know, since I've played because I stopped playing when I was pregnant with Roman. So it's it's literally been well over a year, probably a year and a half since I've last played D&D. So I miss it very, very much. Okay, I have some good pink vibes in here. And don't worry, I'm gonna bring you in closer once I just kind of get some color in here. I'm gonna let this dry a little bit too. Just kind of adding some little splotchy splotches. But I'm gonna come in and ink this with um, just some black acrylic ink on top of my sketches because I think that will look cool. And as this is drying, I can talk to you a little bit more about kind of what I'm gonna do for my D&D sketchbook. All right, things are dry enough now, so I'm kind of uh, good to go. It's dry enough, I'm gonna go with it. Um, for the inking portion, I'm going to be using a tiny little detail brush. This is a Princeton Heritage Round Size 2. And then I'm going to use some abstract acrylic ink from Sennelier. I use a lot of different black acrylic inks. Um, this just happens to be the one closest to me, and I'm trying to use it up. So there you have it. And I've got a little ceramic palette, really simple. A lot of these supplies and stuff that I use often is over in my Amazon storefront. So you can always go look over there. Anywho... Let's talk about Dungeons and Dragons. So it's been a while since I have played, um, but with this new campaign comes a new character. My last D&D &D character was crazy. Her name was Helena. She was a tiefling barbarian. Ooh, my hands are shaky. I have not done proper warm-ups this morning. She was a tiefling barbarian. Uh, she was bloodthirsty. Uh, very ragey, hated everybody, chaotic, evil, uh, sex-crazed demon lady. Um, she was really very sassy, didn't like people, uh, just wanted to kill everything and, and anything in her path. She was a very, a very crazy lady. And if you guys watched our last campaign on Twitch, we streamed a lot of it. Um, you can witness some of that Helena chaos. It was pretty... It was pretty wild. So that said, I really wanted to create a different character this time around, one that was just completely different from Helena, just the complete opposite. So this new character that I have created was one that I actually created a very, very long time ago. Probably around the time that I had created Helena, this was an idea for a character that I had. And maybe I should probably save the details of this character for when I'm actually doing my D&D sketchbook. I don't know. I'm going to talk about it anyways because I'm excited about it. She is going to be a human warlock. Now, if you're new to D&D or you don't know what the heck I'm talking about, 
Um, in Dungeons and Dragons, you choose a class and a race. So basically, what type of creature or human or person you are, and then what is the basically skill or thing that you do? Like, are you a magical person? Are you a uh, you know, are you a, just a bloodthirsty barbarian demon lady? Um, you know, there's all sorts of different uh, combinations of things that you can play, and that basically determines your skills and abilities within the game. So, last time I played someone that was really just like a tank. Uh, Helena was, you know, being a barbarian and a tiefling barbar bar barbarian. She had no real magical powers, so very non-magical. She was terrible at magic. Uh, non-magical, non-spellcasting character. This time around, I've decided to play a spellcaster, so someone that has magic and that can obviously cast spells. So that is gonna be new territory for me. Definitely gonna require some more research on my end to learn how to cast spells. But this particular character was someone that I had thought of a long time ago because I obviously, I love witches, everything with witches, anything having to do with witches, the aesthetic of witches, all of that. And I really wanted to kind of create a very like classic sort of witch character and one that was very feminine and um, that, you know, sort of came from a coven uh, maybe in the forest and that was soft spoken and um, very focused on magic and kind of things that she had done for her whole life and, and that she had been taught from her coven and her, what she was taking with her on her journey and whatnot. So that is the direction that I'm going in. The name of my character is Rowan, which is a name that I've always loved. And um, it's also kind of funny because it's Roman, but the M is upside down. So it's kind of like a little secret nod to my personal life there. But her name is Rowan. She is a human warlock, as I mentioned. And her main storyline really is that she comes from a secret coven of, wish of witches. Um, you know, in the forest or what have you. And, I'll, you know, I have names and more detailed backstory information on that. But um, she basically seeks out this journey, this adventure, as part of kind of a rite of passage that you must partake in within, um, within the coven. So when you, you know, kind of like a coming of age sort of thing. You hit a certain age and you must leave the coven to achieve X, Y, Z, whatever that is. And what I'm doing here is I'm telling you the backstory of this new character that, I, that I'm working on. And I'm telling you this because what I want to, be, want, what I want to do next is create a D&D &D sketchbook or notebook. So when you actually play Dungeons & Dragons, uh, most, I would say everyone, has a notebook of some sort where you take notes because a lot happens. You meet people, there's locations, you know, you carry things, you pick up things along the way, and you kind of need a place to document that. And in previous campaigns, I've always just had a really simple kind of lined composition book. And this time around, especially because we're doing like Zoom style, well, I think we're playing on Rule 20, but a Zoom style campaign where I will be literally be sitting at my desk, I thought it might be more fun to create an actual D&D sketchbook so that as we're playing and sitting there in front of our computers, I could quite literally have a sketchbook like this next to me where I'm able to kind of draw things and document things and create like a really unique sort of D&D notebook that's really more like a D&D sketchbook. I'm gonna call it the D&D sketchbook because that's really what it is. So, I'm telling you this backstory information so that my D&D sketchbook makes a little bit more sense when I go to create it because I'm gonna have to set it up. I think there's gonna be quite a bit of set up, set up involved in that. Like what's the information that I need at the front of it? Like I'm gonna almost have to have some pages in it that's kind of like, like plannery if that makes any sense because there is some just some general information that I need to kind of like tab and come back to. Um, you know, whether that's pertaining to my character or something else, there's always there's always information that you have to be writing down and kind of referencing all the time. I'm moving this around so I can get to the other side. So I just thought that having like a D&D &D sketchbook would be really fun and by the end of the campaign could be a really interesting way to kind of look back and reflect on things and it would just look really cool. And I also just, as we're playing, I'm always drawing stuff. So even when we would play live all together at the table, I was always drawing 
in my little notebook and I'll have to dig that out at some point. It's pretty crazy. Actually, that's what I should definitely do. I should definitely find that notebook from the last campaign um, when I go to film the D&D sketchbook video, which I'm hoping this is something that will be interesting for you guys because it's something that I really want to document. So I'm hoping to film some of those videos and share that with you here on YouTube because I just think having a D&D sketchbook is really, really cool. And even if you're not into Dungeons and Dragons, like it's just gonna be a crazy, like whimsical, you know, looking sketchbook. So I think it will still be interesting um, to follow along, even if you're not into D&D, which is fine. So yeah, so I'm telling you some of the backstory of this character because it will, you know, it will appear in the setup of that D&D sketchbook. So my name's Rowan, human warlock. She's coming coming from a coven in the forest. She's doing this rite of passage sort of journey, what have you. And what gave me one of the real kind of ideas for this character, and whenever I'm creating a new D&D character, I'm always thinking about what's, you know, the physical traits. Sometimes the physical things of like, what are they wearing? What do they carry? Sometimes that actually inspires an entire character on its own. And that was definitely the case for Rowan because I thought what might be cool about her and and I was thinking about what she would wear as she would leave for her journey and she would be wearing a cape. And on this cape, what I thought would be cool is that as she travels, and again, this is role player stuff, this isn't happening in real life. As she travels on her adventure and things happen, she embroiders little images and her story onto her cape or her cloak. And I just thought that that was such a cool idea for a character that, you know, every evening before she, you know, sets up camp or, or camp is set up and she's about to sleep or whatever, or wherever they're taking a break somewhere, um, she embroiders her day or, or a moment from her day or, or significant moments on her journey with the idea that when she's at the end of her journey, she returns to her coven and shares her tale to the younger women of the coven or just to the, you know, all the women in the coven or what have you, um, through the images that she's sewn on her cloak. And I just thought that that visually it was such a cool idea. So that is definitely a big part of Rowan's sort of story and what she does as she kind of navigates through the world is she has a little sewing kit with her. So that's what some of these images are that I've kind of sketched up here. I have like the scissors and kind of the little thing of thread and buttons um, and little things here and there. So not only do I have like the witchy sort of imagery, but I have these little like sewing kit sort of things um, because she will have a little tin box of her sewing materials that she, you know, has with her on the road that she uses to embroider her story along the way. And I just love that about it so much. Now, how we play it in real life, I probably maybe would have actually embroidered little things on a cloak, but ain't nobody got time for that, okay? And that's where the D&D sketchbook will definitely come into play because I can literally kind of draw things in the sketchbook that maybe I would have normally sewn into the cloak because I do like doing embroidery so it kind of fits to something that I enjoy doing anyways. So that kind of explains some of the imagery that I have going on here as well is these little sewing kit details and even just kind of like embroidery thread details kind of throughout. But in this sketchbook I thought that it'd be fun to just do a like collection of images just to kind of give me some ideas that I can pull from and then put into the D&D sketchbook once I actually get it started. Um, okay, so I'm, I'm rambling quite a bit here and I still have a long ways to go. So I'm just gonna stop talking for a moment and continue inking and uh, I will check in with you guys as I make a bit more progress on this. i 
night. So checking in now that I've kind of finished up my little sketchbook sesh for the day here. This was my little book of horrors that's now just become my regular old sketchbook that is in the rotation here. It's funny, I was looking at some of the stickers that I put on the front, and this is one of my own stickers from last year's Inktober, and actually I'm coming out with an Inktober set of um, stickers soon uh, that will include this little witchy gal, but I realized she actually kind of looks like the Rowan character that I've been talking about so much in this video. Um, it definitely has some like Rowan vibes, but I'm picturing her more of like a pastel witch kind of thing. So that's why I kind of had more uh, pinks and purplies that I was using. Anyways, you saw that I covered up my little title that I had originally put in the sketchbook, like officially wiping the slate clean of this no longer has a theme. This is just a sketchbook that I am using and I already feel so much better about it. Um, here you also saw me come back to a pre-existing sketch that I already had going on here from when I was watching Nightmare Before Christmas, but I had some leftover ink in my palette, so I just kind of came in and added some ink kind of all over, just making it feel a little bit more finished. I'm definitely not finished with this by any means, but it'll end up kind of being just a leftover piece, which I do frequently. I'll just have sketches that if I have leftover media, I'll come back and I'll add to them or fill in backgrounds or outline or whatever. This is also a good example of things that I have sketched out in pencil, or this is actually, this is a gray colored pencil actually, um, and I can come back in with a pen and just sit anywhere and kind of doodle if I'm in the mood to doodle. So I like having things unfinished like this because I can always kind of come back and dabble with them, which I definitely will with this one. And then here was basically the little page that you saw from start to finish where I was really just trying to capture some different ideas for this um, D and D sketchbook, and it was exciting because even just like this little, you know, quick image here of the little branchy uh, pentagram here, I feel like that could be something really cool, like on the cover. Um, these little like tarot card looking things could be interesting, like page numbers, and it kind of got me thinking about different pages that I could dedicate in the D and D sketchbook, and that's where I made just some general list of things over here, and I left some space over here as well in case I wanted to test more like color combinations, for, so that if I want to have kind of like a theme going with certain pages or test color combos, I can kind of start to build that here and create kind of a color palette that really fits with kind of uh, Rowan's character story a little bit. So um, just wanted to give you a little bit of the insight there of kind of just what I'm thinking, but um, I'm quite pleased with this. It was really kind of like a visual brainstorming session of kind of imagery and things that I might be able to kind of put into that sketchbook. So I'm using a sketchbook to plan another sketchbook and so it goes. But there you have it guys. I thought that that would be just a fun little sketchbook sesh for you. I hope you like this video. Let me know if you like seeing these kind of videos. I can definitely do more for YouTube. And of course, a special shout out and thank you to my patrons who support me and get to watch videos like this all the time, every month. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe for more uh, lots of fun video artsy content and I'll see you all in the next one. Bye!